Uh, I'm Fernando Martin from the Champagne Mod Foundation and Algebraic AI. I'm presenting uh, on behalf of the ALMA Consortium. So ALMA, uh, human-centric algebraic machine learning, uh, leveraging abstract algebra for a more transparent AI. This is a, let's see, this is a European FED project. The topic is to explore and consolidate a new technological direction to put it on the map as a viable paradigm for future technological applications. The subtopic is human-centric uh, artificial intelligence. The European Commission states the problem as uh, current machine learning algorithms produce models that are difficult to understand, that are opaque, and may have implicit biases in their decision making. So this is the problem they they want to resolve. And they want an initiative that seeks to advance uh, AI that is more more trustworthy, that has the explainability and transparency features built in. And for that, they think, and we agree that uh, new radical approaches are, are needed. The European Commission continues that uh, the explanation process should be intertwined with the decision making to allow uh, decisions that can be refine, adjust, and that allows a mutual exchange between the human user and the, and the artificial intelligence. So we are going to explore models that uh, go beyond the offline and centralized data processing and research on uh, incremental and supervised and one-shot learning, also small data machine learning. So this is the goal of the call. Uh, finally, there is a final larger goal is to align uh, development of artificial intelligence that aligns with the needs of society. So the European Commission has to be careful to consider the main implications of artificial intelligence. And it has a, an AI strategy that they call um, human-centric artificial intelligence. Um, they, we hope that our proposal um, really aligns with this uh, and addresses the ethical dimensions, um, that many ethical dimensions that artificial intelligence poses. So our new um, technological direction is called algebraic machine learning. Uh, this is a form of machine learning based on semantic embeddings of data and also on formal knowledge, data and formal knowledge combined into discrete algebraic structures. So we don't use um, uh, neural networks. We actually don't even use statistical learning. This is a different kind of, of machine learning that is based on abstract algebra. Um, this is a short presentation. Um, you can judge if it's uh, radically new or not. Let's see.
OK. So as you can see, uh, it can be considered a radical approach. We are not even using parameters. We are not uh, targeting error minimization. We don't use gradient descent. Uh, there are so many differences with the statistical learning methods that will be uh, difficult to go through all of them. But we are going to see a few. So algebraic machine learning is a form of symbolic AI. It can be considered symbolic AI as the kind of AI that was popular during, during the 70s. But the difference is that this form of symbolic AI can also learn from data and not only from formal descriptions. Actually, AML can combine learning from data with learning from formal descriptions. So in some way, the two common approaches, the bottom up and top down approach to learning here uh, become the same because for AML, there is no difference between data and formal knowledge. So it combines both naturally. What we can do with uh, uh, the same AML algorithm, for example, is to use it as you would use a neural network to identify digits in the NIST handwritten character data set. But the same algorithm can also be used to play unsupervised Sudoku. So you have uh, an algorithm that can be, can be used to do supervised learning and also unsupervised from completely different kind of data. But for the algorithm, both the data in the NIST character recognition data set and the rules of the Sudoku are the same thing. So that's one of the, or perhaps the, the, the key advantage of, of uh, the right machine learning. So some examples of problems here on the left, we have um, character recognition, as we said. Uh, this is um, from the output of the AML AML um, learning algorithm. You can see there a couple of digits that have appeared there. Those are digits that are mislabeled. The, the um, machine learning algorithm can, can discover those, those mislabelings potentially. Um, so in some cases, we can, we can even um, understand when the, the machine learning algorithm is comfortable or, or, or understands the data fully or when, when it, it thinks that that needs to memorize the particular example because it doesn't match with, with uh, the other examples. Now, this is a case where mislabelings are identified. The problem in the middle is the n queen completion problem. This consists of uh, locating n queens in a, check, in a chessboard without attacking each other. And this is a problem that can be learned just like the Sudoku from the rules of the game. And then uh, the AML system can learn unsupervised. And the problem on the right is a, a problem where it's, it's just exiting from a maze. And the problem is to um, describe the geometry of the maze to the, to the computer and then explain the goals of the game. And in this case, uh, it can in one shot learn how to exit the, the labyrinth without even moving because the, the description of the problem can be so complete that actually there is only one solution. So AML understands the language that is here on the left, which is uh, an algebraic description of a problem. The problem is the n queen completion problem, locating queens on the n queens on the checkboard. So uh, the the problem on the, the 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 equations on the left represent an embedding, an algebraic embedding of the n queen completion problem into a semi lattice. So the the dot there is an idempotent operator and the you always you also have the the order relation for the partial order this language kind of uh, not very not trivial to to design the algebraic embeddings and one of the goals of the of this proposal is to design a higher level language that, that, that normal uh, users that are not experts in algebra can can actually use to describe problems in a more amenable way Algebraic ML, uh, algebraic AI is capable of um, decentralized learning. This is a very important feature because we don't need to have a centralized system. We can have many users with their own data and independent, uh, independently training their own local uh, machine learning 
system and then sharing what they know. Uh, and in fact, they could be uh, resolving problems that are exactly the same or different. So problems that are related and still share valuable information. And this can happen without the, the need of, of, of caring of when and how frequent the, the computer have to communicate. So they can, they can learn it fully independent and then join, interchange what they have learned and separate the game. Another uh, particular feature is that there is no trade-off between memorizing and learning. This is something um, that somehow um, is, is, a, is probably a misconception, even with neural networks, that if you memorize too much, then you're not generalizing. And this maybe is true in most statistical learning, but, but it should not be the case that you, that you have to avoid memorization to learn. And in, in the case of algebraic machine learning, memorization is needed to, for learning. So the, the AML can perfectly learn a data set and generalize at the same time. It can perfectly uh, memorize the data set and also generalize. So uh, as a consequence, no overfitting or very reduced overfitting occurs. And we have observed that in, in some limited scenarios, but in, in theory, it should be this way. And actually, we can see, for example, with the NIST character recognition data set that the profile of learning, so you see here the error going down, and then it will remain flat. And it doesn't matter how much you train with the same data set, you are never going to see the effect that you see with neural networks of, of increasing error rate in the test set. So this is a test set error rate remaining flat, therefore showing no overfitting for the um, NIST handwritten character data set. Other uh, characteristics is that more robustness for, uh, than, than statistical learning systems to the statistical properties of the training set. So when you are working with neural networks or other statistical learning tools, you have to be very careful of how you prepare your data set because different mixtures of data will produce different results. For example, you are separating images from men to images from women, and if you just show only men, it will most likely say that all the, the test data is men, right? So you have to be, be careful with the statistical learnings on, 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 on designing properly the frequency of presentation of your training examples, and that does not occur in algebraic machine learning, that is more robust to that. So at the end, you also want to incorporate the frequency as part of the that is um, relevant, but that can be done uh, learning in a final stage. It's not needed to, it's, there is no need to actually care on how to prepare the, the, the mixture, which is uh, sometimes a problem uh, training machine learning systems. Imagine, for example, training for a self-driving car and you have to, to train uh, the computer to act in a large variety of situations. So if maybe you show too many, uh, too many uh, shots of uh, a driving car through snow, it will forget how to drive on a desert, right? So you have to be careful of how to mix properly your, your input, your training data. And that uh, is something that, that with algebraic machine learning is, is easier. Uh, at the core, algebraic machine learning that does not look at the error rate, does not target error. So the error rate just decreases as a side effect of other uh, algebraic uh, properties, which is in the composability, uh, freedom, and the small size. So when you have an indecomposable algebra that is free enough and is small enough, it will it will use error rate. And so so as a result. We don't have local minima problems, and we don't need something like gradient descent because it's a completely different approach. The algebraic machine learning was introduced uh, by me and my colleague Gonzalo Garcia Pola Vieja in 2018. We are uh, at the Champalimaud Foundation and Algebraic AI. Champalimaud Foundation is in Lisbon and is a relatively recent research institution, very successful research institution. It's a non profit. It has also a hospital and, and a variety of, of, of lines of research from neuroscience to, to artificial intelligence now. 
algebraic AI is a new startup in Madrid that started in, in San Francisco and now moved to, to, to Madrid. So this is the opposite direction as usually happens from moving from Europe to Silicon Valley, but this time it happened in the opposite direction. We moved from Silicon Valley to, to Europe. So here is uh, some uh, resources. Uh, right now it's quite limited, but we have this uh, 80 pages monograph in the archive, and it's also a patent, international US patent applications that are open, so everyone can read them. So the consortium uh, is an uh, international consortium of European private companies, uh, research institutions, and labs. We have uh, Eprosima, which is the project coordinator. Uh, Eprosima is, a, is a, a company specialized in middleware with a vast experience in uh, European projects and now um, successfully being used in robotics. The Champalima Foundation, I just introduced. DFKI, that needs, needs no presentation. INRIA, also from France. Uh, the University Carlos III in Madrid. Algebra AI, uh, the Kaiser Lautern University, the Fieber Foundation, also a well known in European project, and uh, VTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland, that you probably also know. So, the, the work packages are eight. Um, we're going to go through them briefly. The first one is the management package. Uh, Eprosima is the, the lead of the, of the project. Um, so it's going to, to lead the management and the scientific coordination is going to be a task by uh, the German Center, Center of Artificial Intelligence, the FKI. So they're going to be involved in tasks of uh, monitoring, uh, technical, technical coordination and, and similar tasks. Wait a second. Okay. So the second work package is the fundamentals of AML that's led by the Champalimont. What we are going to do here is um, researching in depth on the foundations of algebraic machine learning, studying generalization on algebraic systems, explore other algebraic systems, but also um, explore. Um, the possibility of, of enhanced interaction with the AML. At some point, a human AML interaction in both directions, not only humans giving um, statements to the AML in the forms of formal knowledge, but also trying to extract the knowledge that the AML that is quite transparent. So we have some hope that at, at some point we will be able to better formalize what the algebra has learned. And that is, uh, is something um, which is important because we not only want to, to use AI, we want to, we want to understand what the AI uh, has learned. So we're going to study generalization, as I said, um, study uh, and compare AML with uh, statistical learning systems. And this uh, task, um, led by the Champalimont and Algebra AI is going to provide engines and support. The third part is the engines and the AMLDL language. The AMLDL of description language is a higher level language that, that we want to design to make, as, as I already said, to make easier the, the process of, uh, of the embedding, which now uh, is a little bit complicated. So AMLDL it's going to be an, well, we're going to have a specification that will evolve along the project. We are going to, to reflect the needs of the different partners on the specification and then develop the tools to actually address that needs. So we're going to have a Python and a C interpreter for AMLDL, a consistency checker, some debugging tools, and then um, the engines. The Kaiser Lautern University. Uh, the, the, the microelectronics department is going to help us develop some hardware accelerators. And we're also going to um, have the support of the Fiber Foundation. The work package four is uh, led by INRIA. And, uh, it's centered on the human AML interaction. It has a lot of experience um, in, 
in systems that incorporate uh, sophisticated versions of, of a human machine interface. So, Clia yeah, um, is going to be leading uh, an effort that that focuses on uh, on designing a methodology for. Of, of, this is it's kind of complicated to explain, but it's very difficult for a non-expert user to use uh, a, an AML and the, 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 to explore the possible landscape of different interaction methods is going to is going to take us a, a, a great deal of effort. And Inoria is going to be leading that effort, and they have a fantastic experience in the field of, of computer human interaction. So we are in good hands. They are going to also have the support of, of DFKI for this for this task. The World Package 5 is a very ambitious World Package where we are going to explore, at least in theory, how the highest level um, human formal information regarding ethics, human culture, can be incorporated in an AML system. Th that this World Package is going to be led by uh, DFKI and also VDT and INRI are going to be supporting. So the, the idea is, uh, so it has some aspects that are more down to earth, like the, the using multimodal sensor signals and some parts that are very ambitious. And we're going to be using probably ontologies to represent human knowledge and then go those ontologies on, on uh, AML. So at the end, what we want is to, to be able to control the AI uh, to make sure that it can incorporate ethic constraints and it can actually think reflecting uh, human values. So this is uh, the, the most ambitious part of this, this project. Then we are going to design some system tools for, for networks of AML interacting nodes. So Eprosima has uh, a lot of experience in middleware. So you have a decentralized system of many AI, AI AML agent, agents in, interacting. They're going to be using AML DL to communicate. And that is going to go through a platform, the AML interacting, interacting platform. This uh, work packet is led by Eprosima. Uh, is going to be responsible to develop this middleware and prepare the mediation nodes for AMLDL. The idea is to use it in, in robots and other, other even um, through the internet. So that is uh, also an ambitious task that we hope to be able to accomplish very successfully in the next five years. Uh, other uh, collaborators, Fiber, uh, Algebraic AI, and the Kaiser Lauten are going to be helping develop the, the platform. Finally, we have some use cases that are um, very different. The Universidad Carlos III in Madrid is going to lead this work package. They have um, a vast experience uh, in robotics, and they're going to try to leverage a AML for, uh, for robotics. So one of our uh, use cases is a robotics use case, higher level cognition for dom domestic assistant robots. We are going to also um, develop some tools for supporting creative professionals. This is something that INRIA uh, is going to do. And then using medical images, we are going to, to try to to identify and, and characterize medical images using AML. This is something that, that uh, current um, neural network-based systems are starting to do successfully. We are going to explore the possibility to do that with AML, but with the advantage of being able to co better control and provide background to the AML uh, in order to actually uh, enhance the, the image classification. So finally, uh, this is an exploitation and dissemination work package led by Aproxima and the Fiber Foundations. We are going to try to publish uh, as much as we can 
and uh, in high impact journals if we can we are going to organize a workshop this is going to happen in lisbon uh, this is going to be a workshop for mathematical alternatives to deep learning and uh, we are going to to present uh, algebraic machine learning there and hope to also explore other alternatives that it is going to be an international workshop we're going to do a collaboration with other projects and initiatives like the rose and fire apache and eclipse projects and the emerging emerging uh, european union platforms the ai for eu and also uh, other activities related to the european research agenda so i think uh, you have questions uh, you can you can ask now and if not thanks for listening and you can contact us at almadeprosima.com thank you very much questions <laughs>